एवरी नाउ एंड देन आई गेट दिस कॉमन सीरीज ऑफ क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम यू गाइज पीपल हु फॉलो मी ऑन इंस्टाग्राम और ऑन यूट्यूब हाउ टू बी प्रोडक्टिव और हाउ डू यू स्टे प्रोडक्टिव वॉट इज योर डेली रूटीन लाइक हाउ डू यू मैनेज योर टाइम बिटवीन वॉचिंग मूवीज एंड टी वी शोज लिसनिंग टू पॉडकास्ट रीडिंग बुक्स मेकिंग वीडियोज रनिंग अ कंपनी एंड योर पर्सनल लाइफ सो देर आर पीपल हु डू फ्यू थिंग्स रियली वेल एंड देन देर इज मी हु डज अ लॉर्ड ऑफ थिंग्स वेरी बैडली I'm one of those people who gets interested in things really really fast and then I lose interest in those same things even faster. So consistency has always been something that I've really struggled with and then I met this book. Okay that's a bit too dramatic but I really can't tell you how much atomic habits has changed my perspective and the best part is it inspired me to stop thinking about the outcomes and just start focusing on making these tiny small changes to my daily life just make 1% progress every day that's it it taught me to stop making these ambitious goals which I'll mostly fail at and instead focus on building long lasting habits Hello and welcome back to the channel everyone. Today's video is about eight habits I'm trying to build this year in 2021 and stick around till the end of the video because I want to give away three copies of this book to some of you and just stick around till the end I'll tell you how. Habit number 1. No phones for 1 hour before sleeping and after waking up. Even until recently I had this terrible habit of not even completely waking up but my hands would automatically start sliding towards the phone on my bedside pick it up open twitter or instagram then I'll take the phone to the washroom and then I'll continue scrolling endlessly there and I never even thought about why am I doing this In this conversation with uh, Joe Rogan Naval Ravikant uh, I've spoken about him a lot in my previous videos he says something about modern society and he says something like this So the way to survive in modern society is to be an ascetic it is to retreat from society there's too much society everywhere you go society in your phone society in your pocket society in your ears the only solution is turn it off Now since a lot of my work a lot of our work depends on the internet we can't literally switch it off but I think what he's saying is you need to disconnect more often there's no need to wake up to the world's problems and the opinions of a million strangers and then go to sleep with that same noise in your head if you can just disconnect for 1 hour every morning and 1 hour every night nothing is going to impact the world but in turn it's going to impact you and your own mental health and i mean this in a positive way a positive impact i think a couple of months ago i deleted twitter from my phone but uh, instagram is my main weakness so recently i made this decision that i'm not going to do this anymore i'm not going to use my phone for the first 1 hour and the last 1 hour of my day except setting my alarm or shutting my alarm i am just not going to touch my phone for during this time and it's really really making a difference i just started doing this other thing uh, where on sundays no wifi or no data on the phone on sundays that's what i'm going to try to do and uh, i've just recently started it and it's incredibly hard to do but just one day of not using my phone's internet has really opened up my mind to so many other things that i can do during sunday But still for now I am doing 1 hour after waking up 1 hour before sleeping no phones at all. So what do I do during this 1 hour? That brings me to my next two habits. So habit number 2 is journaling every morning. People who grew up in the 90s know about this concept of keeping a diary. and since both my parents used to work in a bank every year the bank used to give them a set of diaries for the new year and my parents wouldn't really use it so they would give one diary to me every year that will be our tradition and i will start keeping a diary for that year and i do it religiously for one week and then i'll give it up one of the things i struggle with is having a very fuzzy memory of past events and it's something i really feel bad about i feel bad about not having documented my life enough i also have lost a lot of my old pictures and i don't know where all of those diaries also went even during my teenage years i've tried to maintain a journal many many times but i've either lost those notebooks or i've just given it up because i had more important things to do apparently but earlier this year i discovered this app called notion 
and it's just made my life so much easier. I'm definitely going to talk about Notion in a separate video sometime in the near future. But in short, imagine one place where you could organize all your thoughts, all your ideas, all your notes, all your tasks, everything in a single place. That's what Notion is. Even the script for the video that you're watching right now, I used Notion to write it. So before Notion, I used to have a different app for all my different tasks. I also used to have physical notebooks to write down my notes and it was just extremely inefficient to organize all of this or even stay consistent with the habit of writing. But now since I have everything in one place in this app, all I do is wake up every morning, open up my laptop, head to Notion, open my journal tab, fire up a new page and just start writing. I just start writing down my thoughts, whatever is going on in my life, um, how I'm feeling right now and this serves two purposes. Writing down what you're feeling and going through is like having an intense conversation with a close friend. You just let go of all the stress that's accumulated in your head and then when you read it back, it's like you're looking at yourself from a different perspective. You not only get to know what you're going through, but you also get to know why you're going through it. You start seeing patterns of the way you react to people, the way you think about your own thoughts, and it just helps you grow as a person. Secondly, journaling is like documenting your life and all your memories. Today it might seem really ordinary, but three years from now, when you look back at this journal and you look at something so ordinary, it'll seem so hilarious or it'll have some kind of a special meaning when you read it later. And it also tells you where you came from. It keeps you grounded. Like one day last month, there was this big lizard in a house and my wife asked me to chase it away. And I wrote about it in my journal. And today it just seems so ordinary, but reading it in the future from a different perspective, I think it'll have a whole new meaning because it captures a specific time in our lives, especially in the time of everything that's happening around around us. Habit number three, read every night before sleeping. This is pretty straightforward. Sometimes I read in the morning also, but I definitely make it a point to read before I go to sleep. After I'm done with my day, I just turn off all my screens, put my phone away, go to bed with a book in my hand. I make it a point to read for at least half an hour and then I automatically go to sleep. Earlier I used to read just one book at a time but now I'm treating books like TV. Depending upon my mood that day or that night, I'll just pick up one particular book and I'll just enter that world for that night. So anyways, if any of you are feeling really stressed right now, if you're going through a difficult time, if you're feeling um, that you're finding it difficult to sleep or if you're just new to reading, just switch off your data or Wi-Fi on your phone one hour before you sleep or even half an hour before you sleep and just read a book. Just try it for a week and see how it feels. That's all I'm saying. Habit number four, try to remember less. Let me explain what I really mean by this. It's one of the most underrated habits I've ever started. So if you just take me personally, there are a lot of different aspects about my work and my personal life. Fully Fill Me is the company that I run. It's a big chunk of my work. Creating content on YouTube or Instagram or any other platform is also a big chunk of what I do. And apart from this, there are also so many different things I want to learn and so many different tasks and things to manage and things to remember. It's not only hard, but it's extremely stupid to try to remember all of your tasks, especially in today's age when you have so much of technology to help you out. So in this context, I try to remember less. I trust my own short term memory less and I put more of my trust on technology on especially Google Calendar to help me out. The moment I have a new thought or a new idea or a new task, or if someone tells me to do something, someone gives me another task, I don't try to remember it myself. I just set it as a task with a reminder on my Google Calendar. It's become like a personal assistant that I don't even need to pay for. Habit number five is invest 10% of my earnings every month. I don't know if any of you guys have experienced this before, but whenever I take a shower, sometimes I have this sudden thought that pops up in my head, which says, what if one day you're old and you're not earning anymore and you have no money to take care of yourself? That thought is just scary and I've already wasted 30 years of my life not thinking about investments, not thinking about the future 
But right now, after watching people like Tanmay Bhatt or Ankur Variku who talk about investments and personal finance so much, I've started to think about the future, started to think about investing a little more than I did before. And it's not just about old age. I really just want to have a good life. I want to travel to different places. I want to buy a few things that I like. I don't want to be in a situation where I have to be indebted to someone. I don't want to owe anyone anything. So since last year, I've slowly started investing in a few stocks in a mutual fund. I have health insurance now, and that is an investment. You never know what's going to happen with the way things are going right now. And seriously, 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 just trust me, I'm not some big investor or anything. The amount I put in every month is very, very little, but the important thing is that I've started. Habit number six, one hour of exercise at least five days a week. So if this is fitness, I am somewhere over, um, no, I'm not even in the frame. I think it's an understatement when I say that I am not the most fit person you'll ever meet. Since many, many years, I've tried to change this. I've gotten so many gym memberships. I've actually gone to a couple of them. Uh -huh. But for some reason, I've just not been consistent. But since the lockdown began and since I couldn't go out anywhere, I just started walking and jogging around my apartment complex for just one hour. I do about maybe five to six kilometers and I do this at least five times a week. This is not some big fitness regime or anything but it's better than nothing which is what I used to be also for those who ask when I listen to podcasts this is the time when I go out for a walk or a jog I put on my headphones and I listen to my favorite conversations my favorite podcasts whatever it is habit number seven two words I never thought I'll say in my life skincare for 30 years of my life, I never understood what is the use of a moisturizer. I don't think I still do. And I guess because of the complete lack of knowledge about skincare, my skin looks like the thing from Fantastic Four. But I'm married now and when you get married, you get to know so many things that you did not know earlier as the ignorant man that you used to be. So every day before going to bed, I have started this small skincare regime because of my wife. Nothing fancy, just one toner, one moisturizer. And during the day before I head out to work, I use sunscreen now. I have no idea if it's making any kind of a difference and I still get pimples like a teenager, but it does feel nice in a way when you do it every day. I don't know. And finally, habit number eight, putting out a new YouTube video every week. Just like life, YouTube also demands consistency and before February of this year, I was not really consistent with YouTube. I just made videos whenever I felt like it. Maybe I'll make one or two videos a month. But once again, after reading Atomic Habits, I've decided to be consistent about YouTube to put out a new video every week. And it's really, really made a difference. I just want to share this graph of my YouTube journey so far. So if you look at it, this point is September 2019 when I launched my channel. You see these little upticks are the days I released videos and it starts spiking a little around February and in May, it properly starts shooting up. Just three months of consistency in February has made so much of a difference. Views started increasing because of the beautiful concept of compounding and it's not just that. I crossed 10k subscribers in May, which almost took around two years. From May to July, in just a span of three months, 10k subscribers have grown to 41, almost 42k subscribers right now. And I really like this quote by Woody Allen, 80% of success is just showing up. And I'm not saying this is success or anything, but it's progress. And that's really what I care about. And apart from progress, right, this consistency thing, it's just really so extremely satisfying to me as a creator. Right after hitting publish every Friday, there's like this new challenge. During the next two days of the weekend, I go through my list of ideas. I pick one idea, I write it down, shoot it, I edit it, and then I publish it again on Friday. And it's not even about the views. Taking up a new challenge, working on something new every week, through the week and then just releasing it into the world one day of the week. Within this weekly routine, there's this element of newness, of excitement and just pure satisfaction. And I think it's not just me, I think you guys, you guys have motivated me to come back and do this every week. So genuinely, very, very genuinely. Thank you for all the support that you've been giving to this channel and my content. It really, really means a lot. Thank you.
So those were the eight habits that I'm trying to build in 2021. There are also a few other habits which I can't really talk about right now because I'm just not consistent enough with them yet. But coming back to the thing that I said in the beginning of the video, I want to give away three copies of Atomic Habits to three of you. Uh, the only rule is that you have to be in India. I really can't ship abroad right now, but this is a chance to win a free Atomic Habits book. All you have to do is this. I just want you to answer this question in the comments as descriptively, as elaborately as possible. Now the question is, what is one habit that you're building or trying to build right now and why? And the three best answers which I'm going to choose are going to get three copies of Atomic Habits sent to your house. And yeah, that's the giveaway. That's the end of the video. I hope you like it. I hope it adds some kind of value to your day. But for now, I hope you guys are doing okay. I hope you're safe. Thanks for watching and I will see you next Friday.